Hello and welcome back once again to the Professor Podcast. I'm Tyler and I'm joined today with um, Sheila Stewart and she is the wife of the late great Andy Stewart, obviously a really famous um, comedian from our both comedian and singer. So hello Sheila. Hello. Um, so would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, um, well I don't know, I think you've done quite a good job yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm Sheila Stewart and I indeed was Andy's wife for many years, about 37 actually, in fact we were married. We would have, if he'd still been around, been married now for 66 years. So were you originally from our both? Because I know that no, Andy no, Stewart no, himself no. wasn't. Well. We met at college in Glasgow, the drama college in Glasgow, um, so that's where we met. I was from Edinburgh. We weren't quite sure what we were doing, going to do at the, at the time when we moved. As I said, my youngest daughter went to the high school here. She was ready to change schools, go on to a senior school, and she was very keen on music and drama, and we were at the time staying in Bankery. Mm. So there wasn't a great deal of scope for that at the, at the time because she would always have had to travel into Aberdeen to join in with anything. So we thought here would be ideal because yeah. there, there were such a lot of, uh, well, the, the little Abbey Theatre and lots of musical societies and yeah. choirs and things. So we thought this would be a, a good place to come to. Yeah, well, um, you've heard a hist- you sort of history of the town before obviously oh, very much so, yeah yes. obviously his dad worked at the high school as well that's right um i know that your son is also an actor could Absolutely. you tell us a bit about him as well um yes. well um when he was 17 and just about to sit his hires he auditioned and was accepted and he's never really made his home here since he's stayed in london ever since obviously comes up quite a lot yeah to visit but never to stay no. after that. <laughs> um, what was it like when your son was on Only Fools and Horses working with David Jason? Oh it was always so exciting yeah. to, 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 to watch and that's a very much played episode I think isn't yeah. it? It comes up quite a lot. Yes I've always loved watching. I think most of these things there are one or two I haven't watched I know but um, I think I've seen quite a lot of the yeah. things he's done. It's quite an impressive um, family you've got. But. Well, <laughs> I've now got a, a granddaughter who is um, down in London at the moment. She's been nominated for an award in, and as the play she's in, and, and she as a supporting actress um, down in London, which is happening really? next month. So that's very exciting. Yeah. Um, I also have our uh, two grandsons or ballet dancers, so they're very much on the stage all the time. One is down with Matthew Bourne at the moment. They're doing um <laughs> oh my memory. Anyway, they were to have been doing much earlier in the year, but of course. Uh, with COVID, a lot of the yeah. shows were cancelled, unfortunately. So he's just finishing up now instead of much later. And then after this, he's going into Carman also with Matthew Bourne and then doing um, a Christmas show with him as well down in London. So I don't see a lot of him. My personal favourite um, sketch was um, the rumour. And where did that idea sort of the different accents come from? Do you know, I really don't know but Andy was always very good at accents and at a time now what would the date be I can't remember terribly well just the very late 90s and early 60s I think um, there wasn't a great deal of variety work in Scotland and Andy spent quite a lot of time then in England Mm. um, you know, it was the time of the big bands, uh, lots of big band shows, and he would work as a, um, um, oh, I can't remember the word, how awful, a presenter and a, an impressionist yeah. on, on these shows. Yeah. And I I think probably that's, 
he, he was always very good at accents he, before he even before he went on stage ever he was always very good at them what was it like when he started on um, on stage and touring um well um i think he really had quite a meteoric rise to begin with well, as that he, he has toured you know in south africa new zealand australia quite a lot of different places must have been really exciting did he have any stories from these um places oh to i think so but i really <laughs> can't couldn't tell you any one story i don't think that that was particularly funny or interesting um about the tours abroad i used to try and get away with him we had a big family we had five children quite quickly quite close together and then my youngest daughter was born 14 years after my previous youngest daughter um, so it was quite a, a long time and quite a lot of children to look after if you were going away so I used to try to tour with him every second year I would go abroad and they just seemed to arrive by plane and he would go straight to the theatre and then back to the hotel at night and be away probably the next morning again whereas I, I wasn't out at the theatre every night so I had more time to see a bit of the world actually. And um, what was it like seeing these different places? Oh it was very exciting, yeah. very, very exciting. I'm glad though I've got that all passed behind me because I have no notion nowadays to tour anywhere or go <laughs> anywhere very far of you. <laughs> I just like it here in our growth. Yeah. Is there any particular place that you really liked abroad or? Um, I think possibly Canada. As a child, I'd read a lot of um, stories about Prince Edward Island and I was looking forward very much to go around. The first time I made a booking to go out to Prince Edward Island, um, I was staying at that time with a, a cousin in um, just in Toronto, well, outside of Toronto, and he said, oh, you don't want to go, you don't want to go to Prince Edward Island at this time of year because unless it's the summertime, then it's mostly all. I delayed that and did go another time. That was when we were in Nova Scotia, mm. and I went from there, and um, in fact, we, we both managed to make that trip which was very exciting I'd always so wanted to go and see that particular place. Was there any particular place that you wanted to see in Prince Edward Island or? Um, well I think there was like museums yeah. and that sort of thing but of no, no particular place it was just the whole of the the island and the, the names that I'd read about in stories and everything that was interesting for me. What's it like um, when you hear stories about, obviously, like um, I myself, um, we used to sing Andy's songs all the time in primary school. What's it like to hear about um, stories like that, people talking about these I'm, songs? I'm always delighted yeah, to hear it. Of course. I love the music. I'm not very musically inclined, but I do love Scottish music. Yeah. So, did Andy ever practice his songs to you or tell you about them before? Or? Um, well, he. There is one song that he wrote for me in particular. I don't think it was ever particularly popular, but it was always very popular with me. <laughs> and I, I loved listening to it. One wee story about um, when we were at college, because I think you've mentioned earlier, you know, about us going out together and dating and things, which in a way we never did because my very good friend in college, Jean, I always thought she would have been a perfect match for him. So I spent most of my years in college. I was there a year ahead of Andy, so we were only there two years together. But I spent all that time trying to get the two of them to hook up <laughs> together, but maybe it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately that's all the time we have left for today, so thank you, um Mrs. Stewart for joining me today. Oh, thank you. It's been a great pleasure. Yep, thank I've you. enjoyed meeting you. Thank you. Yep. And 
thank you for watching. I hope you join in next time. Bye.